Okay, so you got yourself a new computer, but you've just realized that the new hard drive um, is pretty good. It's a new hard drive, but you don't have your virtual machines loaded in virtual box. Um, so what you have to do, of course, is grab your old hard drive from your other machine, slave it into your PC like I've done here. This is uh, from my old Acer. It's just a, an old spinning two and a half inch drive uh, versus now my new SSD. Um, and on here I have, if I dig through everything, you know, I've just got some shortcuts to make life a lot easier for me. I have a folder in here called, um, yours might be called dot virtual box, which has all the details in it of your virtual machines and settings and stuff like that. Um, what I have is another folder down below, which is called virtual box uh, VMs. You may also have this as well. Now within this directory, um, you're gonna have all your virtual machines and you're gonna have in there like your VBox files and your VDI file and things like that. Now, if you are running pretty well exactly the same specs as the old machine that you just migrated from or that you've uh, that you've moved from, uh, say it was an it was an Intel based machine, and now you're going on to another Intel based machine. Most times you should be able to just double click the VBox file and, and load it back in, and it should go through fine if everything's pretty well the same. In my instance, I've migrated over to an AMD based machine, so um, that's not going to be easy for me to just double click on. It's going to give me some CPU AMD errors and all these other kind of things. So. The way that I am going to open these up, I don't want to bring these across because this is quite a lot of file size. It's 51 gig. I don't want to clog up my SSD, which is only a 240 gig SSD and I've got 172 free. So I want to leave them on my um, my slower hard drive because um, I don't need the fast write speed and stuff, read and write speed for that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is essentially just create new machines within VirtualBox Manager. Uh, but before I do that, I need to specify this as being my VirtualBox directory. Uh, so what we want to do, and it's going to create some duplicates, but I don't really um, care for that. So just go to File, go to Preferences in VirtualBox Manager, and then Default Machine Folder. Just check this section here um, and set that to be um, your directory of where you want to save your virtual machines to. Now for me, the E drive is going to be my, um, my old hard drive, which is perfectly fine. So I'll go okay to that. Now what we need to do is we actually need to create new virtual machines for each one of these machines in here um, and select the VDI. So I'm going to work on the Smash machine to begin with. It's just an XP machine, or oh, Windows 7 machine, sorry. So it's going to go new and I'll just call it Smash and uh, Smash and I'm going to call it 2.0. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use an existing virtual hard disk file and then click the little open button and then locate to that drive. So my Acer uses my directory, VirtualBox VM smash, and there should be a VDI in there. Now, if you were to call it the exact same name, it's gonna chuck an error at you. And that's because the file or the folder, it already exists in here. So it doesn't wanna recreate that folder. Um, so what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be smash 2.0. This new folder is gonna have the VBox file in it, suitable for my machine, my AMD based system as well as um, any other preferences and stuff like that, but it won't have the actual VDI file. The VDI file will still stick in this original folder here. So let's go ahead and load that. Um, oops, I need to, there we go, let's pick it out. Now, the other thing as well is just um, <laughs> make sure that you choose your type Windows and make sure it's the right, uh, the right Windows version. So Windows 7, 32 bits, perfectly fine for me. Gig of RAM is gonna be okay and we'll create the Smash 2.0. And as you can see, the folder has been made here. And in there, we've just got the VBox <clears throat> and this other prep file. The actual VDI is still gonna be here. So make sure you don't delete that VDI. So then what we can do is we can jump in, check the settings before we get started. Just make sure the system processes is all where we want it to be. Storage and the display settings. Um, something you might want to check is uh, the boot options. So just turn off what you don't need. And once you're happy with it, just give it a start and make sure it all loads up as you can see here. And I'm already finding that I'll have a better boot speed um, on my AMD system because of the the vast amount of more RAM I've got available and the faster CPU. Um, so it is a lot better even though I'm leaving it on a older um, 5200 RPM spinning hard disk. It's still a lot faster on this machine than it was on my other machine. So there you go. That's how I migrated across my um, virtual machines to my new AMD based machine.